you all for being here. I'd like to think that you're here because you really care about this project and you'd rather be indoors and there's nothing else to do tonight, but I know better. But thanks again for being here. Uh, it means a lot that you're taking time uh, out of your night and out of your week to uh, partake and hear about a very exciting project that will undoubtedly uh, have a major impact on our ability to attract and retain talent in this community but also uh, to be a more attractive place uh, as people look to do their business. And uh, we certainly uh, believe that and we hope that you carry that message forward. Um, Tewuk tonight will go through the project and kick off the final design uh, for phase one of the project. And uh, we hope that you'll stick around for just a few minutes at the end uh, to give us some feedback uh, on uh, obviously the presentation, but uh, future steps in which the project will continue. So Tewuk, I'm gonna pass it over to you uh, so you can go ahead and begin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Wisconsin Rapids. My name is Taewook Cha. I'm a principal at Superman Studio Landscape Architecture Consulting Firm based in New York City. I've been working on this project since last year, over a year now. I've been here several times, met several of you uh, sitting here tonight, but I'm also seeing a lot of new faces, which really excites me. So uh, tonight, we're gonna talk about a few things. <clears throat> we want to talk about like why we're doing a riverfront park. There are a lot of questions like, should we invest on the jobs, the economy? Is uh, park uh, improvement really important at this point? It is important, we're gonna talk about why it's important. Secondly, why we're building this riverfront park now? What is the momentum? There are, there are several reasons why we want to do it now, and we're gonna discuss that. And then we're going to introduce uh, who are the uh, design team. The, uh, the Riverfront Park design, we teamed up with a uh, pretty exciting uh, team members, both us uh, 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 out of state, but also the local team members. And then we will go over what we have done so far, uh, what we accomplished with the preliminary design uh, last year. And then we will uh, talk about what is the road ahead to uh, uh, build this into a reality followed by the uh, question and answer about the presentation, the current state of the project. Pro project. And then we can all move out to the, uh, the pre-function room outside where you saw the uh, uh, display boards. We have some kind of fun interactive exercise waiting for us. Uh, on the way out, uh, please grab a pen and a colored dots. There are several boards where uh, we, exp we uh, ask you to put your vote or color that's where you uh, like uh, most or where you think uh, needs most impro improvement, uh, things like that. And also there are some open questions where we want you to uh, write your inputs, uh, how you feel about the waterfront park, what you like most about it, things like that. Uh, so with that input, we will come back uh, uh, in a few weeks with the uh, uh, development of the design based on those inputs. And then uh, we will uh, discuss progress with the community again. So uh, to start with that, why a riverfront park? Why is it important? The number of regions, but good public space, it brings economic value to the community. Uh, we researched a couple of quotes that uh, testifies these values. For instance, quality parks are cited as one of the top three reasons that business cite in relocation decisions. Or a National Conservation Organi Organization American Forests estimates that urban trees save $400 billion in stormwater retention facility costs. So it brings a lot of good economic sense. It brings good uh, businesses to the downtowns. A great public space, great public park also brings great community health benefits. Uh, for instance, promoting places as a physically active can improve individual and community health and lead to a 25% increase of residents who exercise at least three times per week. This is from a National Recreation and Parks Association research. Uh, or the parks reduce stress, lower blood pressure, and perceived physical health directly related to the duration of stays in park visits. These quotes, if you think about it, these are kind of obvious. If you have a good public outdoor spaces, of course it benefits health, uh, uh, or it, uh, it's a, uh, great for the adjacent economies. But uh, there are organizations who research these facts and then uh, that pro uh, proves the benefits of these public space in community health or uh, the local businesses. 
A good public space also brings good social benefits. Like access to parks and recreation opportunities has been strongly linked to reductions in crime and to reduce juvenile delinquency. Parks provide gathering places for families and social groups of all ages and economic status, regardless of their ability to pay for access. Of course. So these are the reasons why it's important to uh, invest in your public parks and public realm, because it's an investment to your public infrastructure. And those infrastructures are the foundation of the good business, good community, good social values. But then why do it now? Uh, are there other priorities uh, necessary in the cities? Of course there are, but we believe Wisconsin Rapids is a strong momentum going on right now. The triangle development is happening right now. Uh, it's going pretty strong uh, with the demolition of the old buildings. A new development is waiting to happen. The new aquatic center is about to begin. Uh, it would be like a really amazing uh, community asset, especially to the summertime for families and children. <coughs> Some of those changes come from small things. A Legion Park, a Picnic Grove, it's a small areas, but the, the first, uh, uh, the path for the Picnic Grove uh, already took place. If some of you probably already seen it. The barbecue grills and picnic tables are ready to go in now. And of course, uh, the development of the Tribune Building. Uh, I saw several of you at the Tribune Building community meeting last night. This is one of the stellar examples, not just in Wisconsin, but at national level. And all, all of those things are happening right now, and it's, it's really critical to ride this momentum to make things happen uh, right now. And when these things happen, when you put this much effort, people recognize it. Uh, state recognized the uh, efforts of Wisconsin Rapids. City was recently awarded uh, Noel Nelson Stewardship Grant, uh, $672,000, to build the first phase of the park. City is uh, seeking additional funding or grant to continue on the next phase, and uh, that I, I'm a firm believer those efforts will be recognized as well. So with those uh, great momentums and uh, recognition of the public spaces, we're really excited to be back to Wisconsin Rap uh, Rapids to implement the first phase of the park based on the preliminary design we accomplished last year. So uh, to that end, we formed a very strong team to implement this park. We recognized, we, we came with a big vision and a lot of experience in public space making, but we also from uh, New York City out of state. To make this reality, we teamed with a strong local engineering team. So a Superman studio uh, based in New York City, we teamed up with uh, MSA Professional Services, a strong engineering team uh, based here in Wisconsin. So we will be providing park planning, landscape architecture design, and project management, but our partner MSA and professional services will provide the uh, civil engineering and uh, a lot of other engineering expertise based on their kind of local experience here, lighting design, architecture, and uh, really bring this project to the reality. So uh, my company, Superman Studio, uh, we are uh, specialized in a lot of public space making, public parks. I myself uh, designed and uh, uh, implemented a lot of uh, public, large scale public parks, waterfront <coughs> parks, uh, some of those including uh, the waterfront parks in Louisville, Kentucky, or Steeplechase Public Plaza in New York City. Uh, I was part of the design team in the, a very uh, a popular High Line in New York City. But of course, uh, we were the, uh, the lead designer for the uh, the Riverfront Park preliminary design last year, where I first met several of you through the uh, public outreach here. So uh, these are the images from the uh, preliminary design, uh, and several of these design elements we we're, were planning to implement in this space. Some of our other projects, including the Water Institute, this is uh, the Waterfront Public Realm as part of the, uh, the Water in Research Institute in Baton Rouge, uh, Louisiana right on the uh, flood plain of the Mississippi River. We also have a lot of experience working with, directly with the community. Uh, we built uh, these interactive uh, musical swings directly with uh, the children's. Uh, uh, children's actually built these swings, so we know a little bit about 
building swings. Uh, we're hoping uh, these swings can take place uh, in, uh, in the waterfront park as part of the uh, community swings in the uh, later phase. And then I invite uh, Todd Trader um, from MSA Professional to introduce some of their projects. Hi, really happy to be here tonight. My name is Todd Trader, I'm with MSA Professional Services. We have 14 offices throughout the Midwest and just acquired another couple actually in uh, Georgia and Texas. However, I, I hail out of the Marshfield office and, and a bunch of us from the design team, <coughs> we're going to be working on the project from Marshfield. So not only, not only is it a project I'm excited to, to design and help build, but then my family can use it as well, you know. And, and we're going to be part of the aquatics project and, and, and uh, my family has already said, you know, they're excited to have another pool in the area to come in and, uh, and visit as well on, on that side. So some of, <coughs> we've worked on projects both north of Wisconsin Rapids, south of, of uh, Wisconsin Rapids along the Wisconsin River. We were involved with the, I don't think it's in here, but the, the Beeren Project, South Beeren Drive, the park, the, the trail along there that was just recently completed. Um, I've been involved with projects in Nakusa. We've, we've done projects in, uh, in, in Lake Dalton. <coughs> There's a boat launch there, Petenwell Park. So a lot of, we've done a lot of things along the Wisconsin River, Mauston, um, New Lisbon, those areas too. So we've done a lot of waterfront development, um, been involved with stewardship grants, park and recreation stuff. So we're, we're really excited to team with Supermass, we felt that was, a, that was a great team because they had done the, the preliminary planning on this project and, and like, like Taywook said, um, together, you know, pretty good team. So excited to be here. Thanks, Todd. So uh, now I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we have done so far or where we left off with our preliminary design as we are uh, kicking off this detailed design phase. So uh, throughout summer and fall last year, we developed the uh, overall master plan of preliminary design for the entire stretch of the river on both sides. We started with a really exciting, nice thing event uh, um, the early last year. And then we went through a, a, a couple of uh, iteration of public outreach, like at lunch by the river, uh, open house ex exhibit. We spoke to uh, several uh, key stakeholders to listen to their uh, the desires and uh, ideas. And based on those input, we developed uh, five guiding principles for this river. Uh, the respect, respect for the river, uh, how to uh, work with the, uh, the strengths and power of the river, open access to the riverfront, diversified programs, and bring economic leverage through this development, and of course, uh, the sustainability with uh, the riverfront development. And based on those guiding principles, we uh, developed uh, uh, several exciting both uh, uh, active and passive recreational programming opportunities along the uh, riverfront on both sides of the river. With that, uh, we propose um, seven key focus development areas along the river starting with the Damage Park, uh, East River Trail, East Riverbank Park, <coughs> Veterans Memorial Park, Meads Rapids View Park, uh, Legion Park, and then the, on the other side, a Tribune Pier. So with that uh, development, where are we now? Uh, we uh, decided uh, together with the city, uh, with uh, the current uh, state uh, grant money at hand, uh, a plan to focus on these five key areas out of those seven uh, project areas. So that would be uh, starting with the Damage Park, uh, continuing on the East River Trail to the East Riverbank Park, and then uh, finish with the uh, Veterans Memorial Park and Mead Refuge View Park. So this is the site today. Uh, Damage Park, a really beautiful area, but largely underused and we need to connect through this residential area to the East River Trail. The East River Bank Park, favorite for uh, a lot of geese, <laughs> but soon to be replaced by uh, a lot of excited people. So that's another beautiful area that is uh, uh, quite underused at the moment. And then uh, on the other side, uh, Veterans Memorial Park, 
beloved uh, community uh, outdoor space with a lot of activities. We want to enhance those programs uh, to really capitalize on current use. And then Mid, Mid Refuge View Park, uh, it's a nice little park that doesn't have a lot of foot traffic right now, but it has a great view of the paper mill, the dam, and to the river. So we want to uh, utilize those resources as well as its uh, uh, adjacency to the, the new triangle development right across the street. So I'll go over a few of these program areas and what we've done and what we plan to do in the current phase. The Demitz Park is a really nice kind of depressed area on the, uh, the, the southern end of the project area. But uh, the side issues include the poor access to the park, doesn't have a lot of programs there, actually have no programs there, um, uh, missing trail connections, and then of course the, the failing river edge, which is equally important. Uh, on this river edge issue, we, uh, we plan to restore all of the river edges along the river <clears throat> because this project, it's important to recognize this project is not just about the beautification of the park, but it's an investment to the, uh, the, uh, the river infrastructure that includes the shoreline uh, stabilization. So on the damaged park, uh, you see here in this kind of three-dimensional uh, um, representation, mm -hmm. the, the shaded area is what is planned for future development. The rest are uh, being planned for this phase of the work. <coughs> so blue areas are fishing pier, or a picnic green and shade shelter, a comfort station, a restroom building, a parking, multi-use trail, and water access. These are the elements that are being planned for this phase of the work. And then uh, a couple of really exciting programs, including Adventure Playground, uh, Splash Pad for Children, Toddler Playground, or the Boat Launch are uh, being planned for, not in this phase, but for the future development. So in the current phase of the work, you can see this uh, new uh, park trails, uh, picnic green, a shade shelter, and nice green areas that is ready to uh, develop, ready to be developed for the future adventure playground. Continue on up upstream, East River Trail. Uh, there is a kind of uh, missing connection between the park, and this will make that nice connection. <coughs> so side issue includes this. Uh, uh, trail and residential interface. This trail has to go through uh, uh, residential areas in the uh, Third Street South, so uh, important to uh, coordinate that interface, interface properly and missing trail connections and also ensuring the bicycle safety along those multi-use trails. So we will be proposing these bike lanes and uh, bike trails and multi-use trail. Uh, uh, somebody asked uh, outside today, uh, what, what is Bike Sharrow's? Uh, bike Sharrow is the uh, new system that uh, the, the DOT is developing. It's basically shared, uh, shared road lane between bicycles and cars. So on this Sharrow's, bicyclists will have an equal right uh, to the road to the, the motorist, and the cars will have to drive slowly and uh, the respect bicyclist. And it, it, it's not uh, being applied on every road, but there's a certain criteria. Uh, for instance, the road speed has to be uh, the below a certain, uh, I believe it's uh, 20 miles per hour or less, and that the road has, uh, should be uh, not too wide. So things like, th those are kind of a criteria to allow bike sharrows uh, uh, to have a safe uh, the bicycle environment for the cyclist. So we developed these uh, trail and bike master plan uh, during the preliminary design. In this phase, we'll be focusing on the uh, third street south bike trail and then the second street south uh, bike trail up to the East River, uh, East, East River Bank Conservancy area. And you see the uh, kind of uh, images we developed during the preliminary design. And continue on uh, East Riverbank Conservancy area. This is kind of large, uh, long uh, linear park area that is uh, uh, pretty underused at the moment. So here, side issue includes uh, again, <coughs> Lego program diversity, uh, failing river edge, 
uh, the, uh, good water access. This is where you can have a direct access to the wa uh, water. And uh, this site has several really beautiful uh, mature trees. So how, how we preserve uh, those mature trees while developing the new park, that's an important issue. And of course, those geese, like how to uh, show away those geese. Uh, our idea on the geese, uh, at the moment, because there are not a lot of people, the geese kind of uh, colonize the space. But once we activate the space, once people start going there, the geese will uh, uh, lead the way to the people. And there are uh, a few other kind of uh, um, uh, design proposals we have uh, to make it less uh, friendly to geese. Like for instance, we're proposing to replace the river edge with this uh, more open, uh, habitable uh, riprap edges. And we're thinking uh, uh, making those edges uh, kind of less friendly on the geese foot would probably make it uh, less, uh, make the geese is less happy and uh, uh, make them to find <laughs> different places to go. <laughs> but the key here really is to activate the space. So people go there, not the geese. So here we really envision this space as a nice kind of passive uh, uh, green space. So it includes a linear park with nice trolling passes and walkways. Uh, we also want to restore some of the water uh, aquatic habitats along the river's edges. But this is also a place of uh, um, passive recreation, like at the uh, ball play for little children and families. Uh, we, we want to inc uh, incorporate multi-use trail for the bicyclists. <clears throat> but there will also be uh, uh, the features such as fishing jetties or the kayak lunch to make it uh, closer to the, uh, the water's edge. And the future work include um, the, the memorial lane uh, we propose with all these donor benches along the, uh, the riverfront park right now and the floating walkway connecting to the, uh, the north to the, the Veterans Memorial Park. So the red dashed lines are what is planned for the future and everything else you see is what's planned for uh, this current phase. So in plan view, you will see all of these uh, nice new riverfront uh, walking trails, uh, a couple of uh, fishing jetties as part of the river edge stabilization and the waterside um, aquatic habitats. And then Veterans Memorial Park is actually quite nice area right now and very heavily used for lunch by the river or um, evening strolls, uh, so just general like uh, passive recreations as well as a uh, major event. So but here the site issues include um, uh, the restoration of uh, uh, some areas of river wall, that's a hundred year old uh, river infrastructure that needs to be uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, properly. Uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting programs happening here, but uh, it doesn't have proper uh, program infrastructure. So we're investing to develop, for instance, uh, new stages for the Lunch by the River uh, concert or uh, performance event. Bike infra infrastructure to uh, complete the, uh, the bike trail that we're developing all the way through the waterfront <clears throat> and also enhancing uh, these uh, existing use on the uh, Veterans Memorial Park. So we are developing uh, new park seatings and interesting and that uh, generates uh, many different types of uses. We continue this multi-use trail along the Veterans Memorial Park. There will be uh, event seatings, uh, live event, event stages, a uh, new balcony for the river view and a place for a lot of different uh, community recreation as well as current event such as uh, the lunch by the river. And the future work here includes the river access through this uh, floating dock but also a floating walkway uh, <coughs> connecting to the uh, East River Conservancy. So as you can see here, uh, kind of meandering uh, brown elements are the, the new sculptural seating decks that uh, 
that are plugged into the existing uh, Veterans Memorial Park, as well as the new stages for the performance at the Lunch by the River and the new seatings. We, here we are also investing uh, in this uh, the river infrastructure, the river walls and the railings. Uh, this includes the improvement on the, uh, the river wall uh, railings and also improvement on the drainage <coughs> to make the existing river wall, river wall structure uh, uh, more sound and lasting. You can see the, uh, the river balcony and the sculptural seating benches and also new stages for the community events, such as Lunch by the River. The, the lastly, the Mies Refuge View Park is a nice little park with a great view of the river, uh, the paper mill and the dam. But here, the river wall and railing needs major repair. It doesn't have a lot of programs that needs to be activated more uh, um, properly. And also with the uh, new triangle development happening right across the street, this park has a lot of potential to complement that development and activate the overall area. So uh, we are uh, putting a lot of efforts this uh, to be developed together with the triangle development. And we see that as a kind of series of smaller uh, community activity spaces, a series of smaller rooms. There are things like history or educational tours can uh, take place here, small group gatherings, uh, kind of quiet outdoor reading rooms where you can uh, bring your newspapers or books and sit and read, and uh, the various types of small kind of community outdoor class kind of activities can happen here. And uh, there will be a few Riverview balconies planned here for future phases of the work with a great view of the paper mill and the, the dam and the river. And also we're hoping to build uh, the kind of community swings we propose in the beginning of the, this park as a fun and interesting and engaging uh, public amenity. That, so that, that is being planned for the future development. So uh, in this phase, uh, not the uh, the river view icon you're seeing on the right side, but we will be developing these new kind of meandering seatings under the tree shade where we can uh, take seat and read and rest. <clears throat> so uh, where we are going with all these uh, new development and uh, uh, the coming uh, uh, implementation, we are at the schematic design, uh, the yellow arrow on the left. And we will be working on the schematic design for the next six weeks. And we'll come back uh, to the rapids probably uh, the, the mid-January or uh, the late January uh, to report our development. And then we'll go through uh, the design development another six weeks. And then all this is based on uh, the continuing uh, public input that we seek and receive from the general community. And then we'll go through three months of uh, construction documentation to get the construction started. So we're looking at uh, uh, later this year, we're hoping to get the construction started. And by uh, next year, the phase one, phase one uh, project will complete it and ready for uh, community use. So that's what we have been doing, uh, where we're going at the moment. I open the floor to any questions you may have, happy mm -hmm. to answer. And after that, we can all go out to the, uh, 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 the pre-function room, uh, and then you can start your uh, uh, inputs on the display board. Yes, sir. You show everything for summertime. What about wintertime? My kids did a lot of sliding down there at Demons Park. That's a great question. Uh, the four season use, especially as we're coming here in the winter time. We haven't forgotten about the winter time use. Um, the sledding is a great, uh, great, great uh, comments. Uh, the especially on the Demitz Park, we are uh, developing these three outdoor rooms of the slope. So we envision those spaces can be uh, utilized for uh, sledding for children. Uh, I think that'll be a great place for sledding and to come out. Yes. <coughs> and also uh, these uh, riverside trail. Uh, we expect those trails to be used for uh, uh, snowshoeings or uh, uh, outdoor uh, trails even in the winter time.
So granted, the winter is pretty cold. I learned firsthand <laughs> yesterday and today. But again, we're hoping this uh, uh, new outdoor spaces public park encourage to people go out more to take the trail or take the sledding with your children and then uh, engage more in your public space. Yes? Uh, well, uh, spring, uh, Uh, absolutely. Uh, we want this park to be utilized uh, the four seasons. So, talked about the sl sledding, <coughs> winter time uh, trail use. In the spring uh, is probably the the active time for the fishing. So, in the Demitz Park, uh, we are developing a fishing pier. Uh, there is already a small fishing platform there, so we want to kind of activate uh, uh, more nicely. So you can go down there at, uh, for fishing in the spring times. And then as the summer <coughs> comes, it can be used for that, uh, the kayak launch. We expect the uh, damage park to be the hub of all these uh, aquatic and water recreation. This is a, a great setup. You can go down, park your car, bring your ca kayak, bring your fishing gears. There will be fishing. There will be either boat launch or kayak launch. So we can uh, we expect uh, the park to be used uh, for that use along the East Riverbank, uh, the conservancy area, as part of the uh, the river stabilization uh, with the riprap uh, edges. We plan to expand <coughs> extend some of those edges with the uh, uh, the fishing jetties, so people can also uh, go out into the river uh, with their fishing gears and uh, the fish. Uh, could you explain, um, I, I think his, his question also uh, included uh, a bit of a question about when that park is underwater and how the design would, um, you know, would facilitate times when the park is underwater. Absolutely, that, that is a great question. <coughs> well, one of the important aspects of this river is it floods regularly because it's a, uh, it's a working river as well as it's a recreation and humanity river. So we uh, build that aspect of the river as part of the park design. So for instance, Demitz Park is uh, built on a kind of lower plateau where uh, it regularly floods. So our intent is to design a park that is uh, durable enough to take some of the seasonal flooding. So the park, uh, areas like Demitz Park will go underwater probably a short period of time every year when there is a flooding. But what the, when, when the water recedes, park is designed and built uh, durable enough to withstand those flooding and uh, people will be able to use it. I've done uh, similar types of park uh, when I designed uh, and I uh, implemented in the Louisville Waterfront Park. That park floods every few years uh, when the uh, Great Ohio River floods. It takes the flooding, it has uh, the proper uh, reinforcement on the planting uh, hardscapes. So when the, uh, the water recedes, park can go back to the Go back for the uh, public use. Yeah. Yes, sir. How does the annual maintenance cost of the completed park, once all the phases have been completed, compare with the current maintenance cost? Well, uh, talking about the entire yes. stretch. Uh, the maintenance cost, we will have to work with the uh, the, the public works and the parks department to come up with the uh, the proper maintenance budget. But that is a great question because. No uh, public park can sustain without proper maintenance. That's a, that's, a, that's a given fact, the great lesson of the public park. So we will make sure that there is a budget uh, um, secured and established for the maintenance of the park. Our goal is to make this park um, as low maintenance as we can possibly achieve. So uh, all the, uh, the high scapes will be kept fairly simple, but strong and durable. Uh, all the plant materials, we plan to use as much of the, uh, the native plant materials that are durable and that can withstand uh, events like flooding. So uh, as we develop uh, the park more, probably toward the end of the design development, we will be able to uh, tell you more about what kind of uh, maintenance budget is appropriate for this park. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, what environmental considerations have been um, made in uh, excusing the geese? And just where, where they are now and where they may choose to relocate. Uh, well, it's not maybe uh, as much of an environmental consideration, but uh, we're hoping there are places for geese all along the river and there are places for people. And the current uh, East River Anchor area, we're hoping that is uh, more of a place for the people. Uh, if they're a problem where they are, yes. are they not going to be a problem somewhere else then? Well, uh, they, I think they can go where, they, they can share the spaces where people are not actually going. And this is big river and uh, the long riverfront stretch. So uh, I believe that they don't have to come to that East River Bank Conservancy area. We can activate that space for uh, the community and the public. Then geese can migrate to different areas. There are uh, uh, the the, uh, the vegetated habitat areas near the dam areas, or other stretch of the river that are not uh, readily accessible to general public. Uh, for instance, the shorelines along the uh, um, the Second Street uh, <coughs> Trail. It's a pretty narrow area and uh, uh, vegetated, so it's not suitable to create kind of generous public spaces, but uh, probably totally fine for these populations. So uh, we're hoping to kind of disperse the concentrated <laughs> these population in that particular area and have them enjoy the rest of the riverfront where people are not willing to go. Phil? Okay, Demons Park, south of the Elks Club. Um, Veterans Park, Mead Rapids View Park, and Legion Park. There's at least five public areas that you're talking about in phase one, and all along that whole area, the river wall needs some serious attention. Um, Phase one is rather ambitious, it sounds like. Is it doable? Great question, because every great plan is uh, uh, the practical solution. <clears throat> so let me clarify, uh, this is a kind of phase one of the overall area development. But what we plan to implement in uh, the phase, uh, the act, we shouldn't actually call it phase one. This is phase one, phase two, and phase three, the, what I presented today. And that includes from the Demitz Park all the way to Meads Rapids View Park, but it doesn't include the Legion Park. And within that, from Demitz Park until the south of the Elks Club, which we call our East Riverbank, uh, East River Conservancy Area, that is our target for first phase implementation by next year, uh, to, by 2018. And the improvement on the Veterans Memorial Park and the Mead Refuge, Mead Refuge View Park is planned for phase two and three. Mm -hmm. So that part, so we have a funding to start implementing from Demitz Park through the South of the X Club, but we don't have the funding in place for Veterans Memorial Park and the Mead Refuge View Park yet. City is seeking additional state grant to implement those parks and we're hoping those grants will coming through as well. And it all depends on, uh, well, a lot of it depends on the success of this first part. So if we do a good job, successful job with the uh, phase one, uh, then it kind of opens up more opportunity, opportunity for future phases of work. Yes? Does the, the grant and funding that you spoke of, uh, does that have to be, um, combined with uh, funds from the city? And if so, where are those funds going to be coming from? That is correct. Uh, Mayor can probably speak more about it, but there's a, uh, the matching fund <coughs> from the city grant, the, the state grant, and city is seeking uh, uh, various ways to match those funds. Jack, you want to talk a little more yeah, about it? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm glad that question was raised. So um, they do require a 50% match, and that local match can come from a number of sources, city tax levy, borrowing, uh, local donations, philanthropic, corporate sponsorships, et cetera. Um, so beginning with this project, as we refine concepts within the project, 
uh, we intend to discuss with various interested parties mm -hmm. to uh, solicit their, their support. And, and to the earlier question, uh, if you've got a 675,000-ish state gift, we've got a total project cost here in phase one of about $1.4 million. Um, there were some additional federal dollars that came through uh, from, uh, from a, a federal organization, and uh, those do require a match as well. So any number of support, uh, sources can add up to be the local match. It's our intention that it would be a multifaceted public-private partnership like all successful public projects uh, such as these. Thank you. Yes. Just getting into more of the specifics, you've got a, a long uh, trail south of the uh, park, which is south of the Elks Club. And that, um, I think the question was asked once before, but I, I, I'm not sure that there were specifics given as an answer. And I'm just curious about what happens with the, uh, with the riverbank. There have been efforts there over the years, um, which uh, I think largely have been unsuccessful. There used to be lilacs there, they took those out, and then now we've got locusts and other weed trees um, and, and uh, bittersweet and so forth um, that are uh, invasive. And so what sorts of strategies or what, what's going to be done there in terms of uh, the built environment? Um, and I would, I would just also say that in that stretch, there are some old uh, pumps that used to be used for, for lawn irrigation for people across the, across the way that are abandoned. And these are, <coughs> in a sense, historical little p piston pumps. Um, there's a nice grove of uh, river birch, which um, has been um, under the <laughs> under, uh, uh, I think, the latitude of uh, city crews has not been chopped down, but these things are maybe things that could be preserved and, and enhanced. Those are all great questions, the great comments, and the kind of uh, the comments we wanted to hear from the community as we, as we are starting this <laughs> detailed design phase. Because it's important to understand what I showed Today was from our preliminary design, it's more of a, um, the vision for this uh, riverfront park. And now the task at hand is to make that vision into reality. And those are the precisely the kind of uh, the issues that we're trying to figure out this phase. Uh, to go a little more specific uh, to those questions, uh, our intent, especially on the, um, the East Riverbank Conservancy area, is to activate uh, what is already great there for public enjoyment. So what are the, uh, the great elements along the East Riverbank area? It's the, uh, uh, the direct access to the river. This is the area where you can actually get pretty close to the water. So we want to ensure the access to the river for the general public. <coughs> what are the other assets? Uh, those uh, the mature trees uh, that are uh, <coughs> growing along the East River Bank. I found those trees extremely beautiful, mm -hmm. well established, a great, uh, picturesque uh, uh, the East River Bank area. But there is no uh, walking trails or pathways for people to access the riverfront or uh, walk through those uh, trees. So our first uh, intent is to uh, capitalize on those existing assets instead of adding a lot of different elements that may or may not withstand uh, the, the test of the time and the flooding, we want to start with a pretty simple ideas, which is providing meandering paths along those beautiful trees and have people uh, able to walk and get down to the water. And then uh, we, uh, after that, though, we will uh, start uh, 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 investing more on the uh, additional plantings uh, uh, different amenities, but those things will probably take uh, further uh, kind of studies and consideration, and uh, we expect those elements can be added in the future phases, because this is not the end of the entire waterfront, but uh, the first step at the beginning of the uh, development. Yes? Um, in cooperation with the city, <coughs> a couple of years ago, um, I went down on the east side of the riverbank, um, just to the south of my, <coughs> my house. Um, 
and took out a lot of the brush and, and other and weed trees, buckthorn and whatnot, left weed trees, which were the large locusts, uh, which seems to be a much more beautiful solution than just clear cutting and then trying with try with new trees. <coughs> Is there any plan to maybe leave leave trees and start uh, more more reasonable, more uh, valuable um, plantings amongst those trees just to, to maintain the character. I, I agree with you, the meandering trails along the river bank for at least part of that where, where the, the bank isn't steep or, or uh, bedrock doesn't exist would be really attractive, I think. Uh, I think we are in uh the full agreement with your uh, comments. Uh, our intent again is to maintain as much of those existing trees and then uh, trying to figure out where we can complement with additional plantings or amenities. So uh, what I showed in the plan, and you probably saw the, uh, the depiction of trees in the plant, all of not probably all, but most of those trees are the existing trees that are already on the site. And the trails that we propose are uh, meandering <coughs> because they try to avoid conflict with those trees. So our first uh, uh, priority is preserving those nice existing trees, including the, uh, probably the ones you mentioned along the, uh, the south end of the park. And then we will try to uh, add uh, the more vegetation where appropriate. Yes. So, like with the uh, East River Bank Conservatory, uh, there's an awful lot of walking trails and bike trails there. Are you going to uh, do you visualize incorporating a lot of night lighting in there? Because, of course, in September, October, it gets dark quite early, and a lot of people might want to use that at night too. So. Absolutely. We want this park to be used both uh, day and night, and nighttime lighting and use is especially important because not just extend the use, but it also ensures uh, better public safety in the public park. The better it's lighted, the more people go to the park, and the safer it is. So our intent is, uh, during, especially during this phase, because we're working with limited resources and we want to cover as much area as we can with this uh, funding, our focus on lighting would be uh, uh, the first on the uh, the safety, public safety. We want to ensure that all the uh, the, the trails, public trails, are properly lighted with a minimum uh, uh, the uh, the foot candle uh, lighting. So uh, it will be fairly uh, utilitarian, but uh, practical lighting in the first phase. And as the further funding uh, comes through, we will invest more. Uh, more on interesting kind of feature, interactive, uh, artistic lighting. Yes. Comment on it is that like sustainable renewable energy lighting, like solar lighting, you know, where it's low impact, you don't have to use. Uh, those are great comment. Uh, sustain again, sustainability is our one of our top priorities and the guiding one of the guiding principles. So we will try to use low energy or LED fixtures wherever we can uh, uh, afford them and appropriate. Uh, if we can, we will certainly uh, research into the, uh, uh, um, the sourcing those lighting with the solar energies. Yes. So I'm talking about the grant that you discussed earlier and possible with the mayor the local uh, matching of that. Have you all discussed using, or maybe as a requirement, maybe it's too early, um, local um, vendors or whatever, you know, um, for local like concrete companies that we have here within the city to work as a subcontract for the prime, so that we have also um, the local company being assisted? Uh, certainly how I would envision, but I think I did for that. Sure. I, well, I think um, it's our intention to there's many talented vendors in the community and uh, a lot of a lot of ideas uh, in the project and we fully intend to utilize their expertise within the project and obviously there's a lot of great comments tonight and uh, we hope to have an ongoing dialogue with anybody that would be interested in offering their expertise and resources to make the project happen and successful uh, whether it's an in-kind donation to make the project successful so we don't necessarily have to uh, hire that work out uh, but there's a whole 
array of, uh, I guess, opportunities for local talent and, and local expertise to participate in the project. Thank you. It's great to hear the mayor's confirmation on that. Because projects like this, it's exciting because it also brings back or brings up the local economy with the construction jobs and uh, the, the supplies of the materials. So our, our intent is, like our first step is to partnering with a local engineering firm who know not only local but knows all about this place and how things get done here. We certainly uh, hope to use uh, much of the locally resourced or sourced materials, including plant materials that grows around here uh, for the, uh, the rocks or riprabs or stone ledges. We would like to use uh, rocks from a locally uh, uh, quarried uh, the stones. So uh, a lot of these, uh, the, uh, the contracting works, uh, the sources of the materials, supplies, uh, we're hoping and we intend to uh, the supply them locally. Yes. What about a wall factor? A wall, you know, uh, I'm not saying that right, but you know, we have those two bridges. <laughs> or can something be done with lighting at night so people come along and say, "Wow, is that beautiful?" You know, they they make a trip here to see that bridge lit, lit up at night or whatever. I was down in Greenville, South Carolina last spring, and it's just beautiful down there what they've done with the lighting, the bridges, the landscaping, and so forth. Well, I'm glad you uh, brought up the wall factor, guys. I'm interested in wow factor. I'm a designer. I want to wow people, of course. Mayor uh, wants to wow people. Uh, but uh, every wow has to start with the first step. So please consider this as the first step to leading that to the wow factor. We had a lot of uh, good, interesting ideas in our preliminary design. Some of them, I believe, truly wow factors. But uh, without proper infrastructure investment, those wow probably wouldn't last that long. So what we're trying to do here is to laying out a solid <coughs> foundation, good walking trails where people can come, uh, good lighting where people can uh, feel safe at night. And once those infrastructure uh, are in place, people start to come out back to the riverfront, we can invest in that and that also uh, ensures the next round of funding from uh, either state grant or private donations, other types of pu public uh, funding will come, naturally come, once we have those things in play. So that's where we kind of target uh, to bring the next round of like a real wow factors. The lightings, for instance, the lightings between those two bridges, lighting on the bridges and the areas between those two bridges uh, the idea has been developed uh, for the kind of wow lighting uh, during the preliminary design. We're certainly hoping to implement those in our next round of development. But please keep uh, continue pushing these ideas and community <coughs> so we can get there after this. Maybe uh, the last question. Yeah. One more, if you can. Um, at the uh, what is it, the, uh, the, the park north of uh, Jackson Street Bridge, um, which uh, houses the uh, clock tower. Is it your intention, uh, when you start to do all of these developments, we see a picture up there right now, all of the concrete we see will be new concrete. We aren't splicing in the old stuff we're going to replace, right? Uh, you're referring to the paving in this case, uh, right? I'm right. So for the park paving, uh, we intend to replace the existing concrete paving with new, uh, more sustainable, uh, permeable concrete pavers. And there are uh, two different reasons. First, of course, to, uh, to enhance the, the pedestrian experience. But more importantly, uh, we uh, learned from the initial investigation during the preliminary design the reason for the, uh, the river wall, uh, the potential uh, structural issue, is not because of the structure itself. Uh, structure itself turned out pretty solid and sound, but it's the, the water infiltration into the wall because of the uh, bad drainage along those walkways. And those water uh, gets uh, captured behind the wall and that can potentially damage the river wall in the longer run. So the, what we're doing in the uh, current phase is replace those uh, walkway pavings and uh, grade them so the water, rainwater drains backward away from the wall. 
uh, and uh, infiltrate directly to the ground, not uh, toward the, uh, the river wall. So those are kind of improvement, kind of infrastructure improvement we're trying to make in this phase to make sure the, the structural uh, integrity of the wall and make the walkway more uh, sustainable. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the clock tower meets refuge group park, <clears throat> we intend to uh, uh, make our improvement uh, that are fully compatible with the existing clock tower because that is actually quite a nice feature and kind of landmark in that area. So what we're trying to do in that area is uh, adding a little bit of more uh, pedestrian walkways. Uh, we will continue this uh, sustainable uh, permeable concrete walkways over to the, uh, the Mid Refuge View Park because that is also continuing stretch of the river wall where it needs proper drainage. So uh, the kind of sustainable consideration uh, went into that uh, design. Uh, but that is also for the uh, structural integrity of the river wall. I, I guess I was just concerned about uh, not having piecemeal sorts of solutions. And if, all, if the paving is to be replaced, then all of it be replaced. It all looks the same. And uh, uh, the clock tower has some, tr some settling problems, not in the clock tower itself, but in the walkways around it. And it would be nice if all of that got cleaned up and it was cleaned up in the same fashion so everything looked new and the same uh, and the same sort of timeline starting on it. Absolutely. That, that is a great and really important point and that's the whole point of doing this overall preliminary master plan. So we have kind of consistent big picture and then we are taking uh, each of these places one area after another but in a very consistent manner. So we have uh, the whole kind of system developed uh, during the preliminary design. We intend to uh, uh, the build these walkways that are consistent throughout the Veterans View, Veterans Memorial Park to the Meiji Refuge View Park, because those two areas are also uh, consistent, uh, the, the coherently uh, connected by those river walls and needs uh, similar treatment uh, to ensure the uh, integrated river wall. But uh, that also means we're not approaching this like a piecemeal by piecemeal. We have uh, the overall entire vision in the beginning, and then we will continue to develop uh, consistent with those visions. OK, just with a quick few uh, parting comments, I uh, want to acknowledge, as was mentioned, it's a very complex project. And so every complex project needs a real good team. So I want to acknowledge city staff that are here, uh, Director of Public Works, Joe Terry. Uh, our city clerk, Paul Shabilsky, is here. Uh, Adam Tagan, our director of uh, community development, as we'll call him tonight. Uh, we're going to be rebranding that department, so we'll give him a fresh title of community development. Uh, we've got Alderman's, uh, Alderman uh, Hep, uh, Ferky, and Kellogg here tonight, uh, all of which are, are following this project very closely. They're the ones that uh, have been truly made this project possible as far as the city council goes. I um, want to also acknowledge that these folks are also your resources to funnel questions, comments, and concerns to. Uh, I want to hear them all, but these guys are all available, uh, as well as myself, to continue to hear the, the concerns and questions as we go forward. Uh, but also want to acknowledge, uh, obviously, Supermass as well as MSA. We've got some additional folks in the room from both firms uh, that are here and that are going to be working on the project over the coming months, as been mentioned. And lastly, uh, I believe in addition to having a great uh, team to work. Uh, any successful community that has taken on a project of this sort, uh, any successful city has a successful vision. And I believe uh, this plays right into the role of a successful vision. As Taewook had mentioned early on, uh, a piece of this project or sort of priorities of this project is what are the economic benefits a project like this can bring a community? We know that for every dollar that's invested in public spaces like projects like this, has a multi-dollar return on investment. And you don't have many dollars and in investments in government such as this that have a return on their investment directly from the project. So there's an economic benefit. There's also health and wellness benefits followed by social benefits. And I'm really excited uh, that these uh, this project embodies the three of those, really a trifecta, I would say, in, in a community development. And so we're very excited for all the multitude of reasons uh, why this project will make uh, Wisconsin Rapids a more successful place, not only to live, work, and raise a family, but also to start and grow a business. So thank you for your attendance here tonight. If you'd give us five more minutes of your time out in the uh, hallway there to give us some additional parting thoughts, 
uh, we'd be gracious for that. Uh, and stay, uh, stay connected with the project. If you didn't sign in, make sure you do so that way we can keep you invited uh, in the loop as to future engagements. So thank you.